Welcome to Trainer Talk. I'm here today with Gary Mandela, uh, assistant trainer to Richard Mandela. And of course, there's not enough time to go over all the accolades they have. You know, I think if I'm correct, nine Breeders' Cup wins, um, a 2001 Hall of Fame for the barn. So um, Gary, thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me, Hannah. Yeah, so to kind of get started, I know, like I said, there's so many exciting horses and so many exciting things that have happened while you guys have worked together. And But what would you say is your most memorable win? You know, the, the most memorable win with my father, as exciting as the Breeders' Cups are, <laughs> might have to be the day we beat Cigar with Darren Go. Okay. It, it came as such a shock to everybody else. But yeah. Being around that horse, we, we could sense him building to one of his better races. And we thought that maybe this was the day where he could run one of his big races and beat a yeah. horse as good as Cigar. And, and to have him do it and do it emphatically the way that he, that, that he beat Cigar that day and the reaction of dead silence from 50,000 people at Del Mar was yeah. just such a unique experience you know, to be in a David versus Goliath situation and come out yeah. on top. I, I think that one actually stands out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, definitely a bittersweet moment, right? Because you're so excited and then everyone's quiet. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it was crazy to be there in person. Um, and then, you know, you work for your dad with your dad, working with family is tough. So what would you say it's like day in and day out working for your dad, a hall of fame horseman? Um, what's that like? It's a privilege. Uh, mm -hmm to work with someone like him as a horseman because you can learn so much um and with horses we're learning things that are different every day I, i've been following him around since i was about 12 years old and i still learn something new every day dad's been doing yeah. it since he was 12 years old and he still learns something new every day so you know dad's you're not wrong that working for family isn't the easiest thing in the world. What makes dad easier to work for than you might think saying that is that he's very consistent and what he expects very rarely changes. And you just kind of have to get yourself to understand his perspective, try and keep up with him horsemanship wise, because he, he just knows so much does so instinctively yeah. uh, that it's it's challenging as well as rewarding. That's great. I mean, consistency definitely makes that easier. Um, of course, you had your dad who you said has been involved since he was 12 years old, you know, Richard Mandela, Hall of Fame trainer, so many accolades. How did you know you wanted to follow in those footsteps? And like, what was your transition into being in this industry? You know, when I grew up, my father had about two and a half acres in a city close to Santa Anita called Bradbury. And so I grew up in, in adolescent years, not only going to the racetrack with him and seeing the races and seeing the morning training, but waking up every morning and looking out my window and being surrounded by horses yeah. and seeing them there in the constant presence and knowing they had to be taken care of after you got home from school or day you didn't go to school and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and so they've just always been a part of my life. And, it, you know, one thing that you get from being around my dad is you, you learn to love horse racing through the horse first. And it, when you do it that way, it gets in your blood and it, it, it becomes very difficult to go out and find a real job. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Um, you know, I, I went to college and, and I tried to sort of break away from it and open my mind up to other things. I yeah. had a few classes that I enjoyed. I, I, I had a real job working at an Eddie Bauer in Pasadena and <laughs> things like that. And um, I, I worked at Claiborne Farm for six months uh, just to try and get away from the racetrack and yeah. see what working on a farm would be like so I could keep the contact with horses. And, and I I loved it, and, and those are wonderful memories. Uh, but I just had to come back, and you know, even with the broadcasting I've done, I've, I've never been able to step away too far, and I, I, I just end up back in the barn and, and alarm going off at 3.45 in the morning, and I'm, I just can't get away from it. 
Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, I think it's a lot of people say that it's like you try to break away, but it somehow always pulls you back. Um, with that being said, you spend so much time, you know, on a race day. Do you have any superstitions on a race day? I used to, and I've given up on just about all of them, I think. <laughs> I, I used to be kind of a certain tie, certain shirt, okay. certain jacket guy. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, the, that's... None of it really works, and I'm, I'm it, as I've gotten older, I've realized that and sort of given up. <laughs> yeah, because there's, you know, there's certain trainers I know who won't be interviewed before a race, but they'll be interviewed mm -hmm. after. You, there's all those things. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah. You know, I know there's five my race horse horses in your guys' barn, which is really exciting. Who would you say has like the quirkiest personality, or maybe your favorite horse? To my, work fa with? my favorite personality is Tis a Magician because okay. he's, he's just such a confident horse okay. he's not snugly and affectionate but I, I i tease people all the time that that he's gentle with me and plays around with me because we're both tall and we can look each other in the eye and we understand each other yeah <laughs> um but 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 he and i just seem to get on really really well and 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 he's got this inner confidence about him that's just really cool to to be around yeah and um but on the quirky side, I'm not sure that any of yours have any any real quirks. Uh, it, um, like what's maybe like Lane, maybe Laneway a, a little okay. bit because he'll get he'll and he's not quirky in, in a bad way where we have to be careful how we train him or do anything different with him. But yeah. boy, when boy does he know when it's feed time. Okay. He'll start hollering and screaming, and he'll, he'll let you know when you're 30 seconds late putting his stuff. Okay. I promise He's you. He's bossy. He wants his food. I love mm -hmm. it. So yeah. I'd say, what? Last question. What is your favorite part about being there at the barn every single day that drives you to wake up, like you said, at 3:30 call time? Yeah, just the horses. Yeah. You know, getting to put your hands on them, getting to see how they are, interacting with them. The the horses make all of this possible there there's no way to to put in the hours that we do at the barn and the long days and the never take a vacation and all the things that go into training and being responsible for horses and, and their health and everything that we do there's what they give you back is is really special and it's really hard to explain unless you've gotten in and done it yourself and felt it for yourself and and yeah. I know that makes it hard to, to to bring forward in an interview like this, but there's something very unique and very generous about a horse's soul. And there's just nothing I wouldn't do for, for the horses that are in our barn. Well, I think that's a perfect note to wrap up on. Um, I don't think you could have said it any better. Gary Mandela, assistant trainer to Richard Mandela, thank you so much for um, jo joining me on this edition of Trainer Talk. Of course, Hannah. Anytime. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.